My guest this week is Julie Klausner. Julie is the creator and co-star of Difficult People and the co-host of Double Threat. She's written two books and performs live in New York City and writes for TV, theater, and film when she's not on strike. And it is my extreme pleasure to welcome to Revolutions Per Movie, Julie Klausner. Hi. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you about the film that, well, the TV special you picked. It may as well be a film. I mean, yeah. It, I mean, we, we've got we've got all the pedigrees of great filmmakers all around it. We have a Menkowitz at the helm. We have a, 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 a Jack Haley, you know, junior yep. or otherwise. Like, th- it has enough star power to be a film. I think so. Well, before we get into that, I, I have to stop and say one thing that's not on the bio you sent me is one of the greatest gifts you've given the world <laughs> is silence. It is amazing. Thank you. It sounds like this. Open your Okay, there's a tease. Um, I am obsessed with it. How do you come up with the worlds of Kate Bush meshing with the mindset of Clarice <laughs> from Silence of the Lambs? How how did that come about? Oh gosh, I well I put out a single this summer called Silence, and I I wrote it with my friend Eli Bolin, who's a really really talented composer, and he's as pop music minded as he is musical minded so i he was a perfect person for me to collaborate with because i wanted to write a song that would sound like it would be from a musical had kate bush written a musical about the silence of the lambs so i approached him and i said i have this dumb thing i keep singing to myself in my head which is hannibal it's me clarice tell me all about freaking buffalo bill and he kind of took that and ran with it and i gave him some more lyrics as we you know went back and forth and he came up with this really crazy wonderful mishmash of all these different kate bush styles and then these early 80s like production techniques um which came from my producer christian kassan who's like you know a, a media and um music savant and he turned me onto that record metal um which is like very represented on on that record i think and um just made it sound like it was a real single which was my my intention with it and it always did well whenever i performed it live so i i figured i should probably do a music video and put it out as a you know as a as a single and so that's what i i did this summer it's amazing. It's at a, also at a proper Kate Bush length. It's like over five minutes. It's long. I mean, poor yeah. Kate, and and Vic Berger, who you know, edited the video, had his work cut yes. out for him. So it took a long time. I mean, I've been working on this for years. Um, but I I'm so happy with the final product. So shout out to Jody Lennon who directed it, and I have all these amazing collaborators. It takes a village, you know. I had a choreographer who would watch all of Kate's like early modern dance uh, stuff and then kind of like interpolate it. So it was, um, it, 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 we, put, we put in a lot of work. So I, I appreciate that you appreciate it. Oh my gosh. I, you know, right when the first cartwheel happens in the video, I mean, I'm, I, I, I at the store, we had a bootleg copy of her Christmas special. Oh, Have you, wow. you watched that? I've seen clips from it, but I've never seen the whole thing. I feel like that might be the only way I understand Christmas is to have <laughs> <Yes>. Kate Bush <laughs> walk me through it or dance me through it's it. It's so wild. And so sure. I definitely got a sense that your choreographer <laughs> was just devouring all this, these amazing... Yes. She was so young and she was so yes. comfortable. Yes. And and confident. And like she was like what nineteen when she did 19. Wuthering Heights? Yeah. Yes. And by did, meaning wrote it, sang it, I mean everything. Choreographed it herself. Like it's all I mean, she was such a one woman show. 
yeah. And at 19, what the fuck? Like, yes. I can't, I wasn't doing shit. No, it's so, not fair. She was a, such not. a prodigy. And, and yes. I mean, there needs to be like an Amadeus about her at some point. <laughs> but, but speaking of my choreographer, he's the one who does the cartwheel. But I don't tell people that because if I could get away <laughs> with getting credit for a stunt, a stunt casting kind of thing oh my or God. a stunt like that, I am all too happy to take the credit. But if you look very, very closely, it is uh, like a 6'2 man oh, wearing a red wig my. doing that cartwheel. So <laughs> that's the scoop. You must have got so much joy watching somebody dressed oh, as you, have you no idea. doing a cartwheel in the spirit of Kate Bush from the Weathering Heights <laughs> video while singing your original song. <laughs> it's just oh, it's so good. I highly recommend it. Everyone should should have someone dress up as them and do something that they themselves physically cannot do. I, I really recommend it. It's a thrill. The song is available on Bandcamp and you can see it on YouTube. But I also wanted to bring attention. Um, I have right here one of your silence shirts. <gasps> oh, my God. It's so cool, Chris. I love it. That's a good one. This too, isn't is it? a hit. Oh, that I... one is the unhinged like. um bananas version you got the crazy one i had to i had to and i, I love it i got i loved it so much i bought another one i've learned oh, to buy things in you. pairs now like you know sure. it's just going to disappear and i gotta have yeah, one as smart. this fades go online and you you can find on on i believe you have links on Bandcamp. It's giant yes and also giant giant apparel right. if you look them up on instagram all of the proceeds go uh to Trans Lifeline, amazing, which is um a, a great a great cause. We do not take a penny of profit. It is like all the T-shirts are pure, um, you know they, they all they all go to a good cause. So so buy an unhinged one or a more classical like we did like a Hounds of Love kind of style <laughs> yes. one too that's really pretty and you could get it in like a onesie or a magnet. So by all means do that too. Yeah, that was hard to pick, but I really like the insanity of. The Vic oh, Burger mashup on the thing, it just it, yes. it just colliding and such a. It's been really fun to wear down the street too because people they know something's going on in the shirt, but they're like, "What yes. the hell is going on in the shirt?" So, yeah, we aim to we aim to confuse and destroy. That's our yes. that's our methodology here. Well, <laughs> speaking of confusing, uh, I want to talk about our lovely sponsor today, RC Cola. Um, oh, who, you mean RC Cola? Yes. The, the mad, 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 mad cola. Yeah, and I even have a, a goblet here, just like Nancy has. I'm 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 raw dogging it myself. <laughs> now, I mean, is RC Cola an East Coast thing? Can you find it easily out there? I'm not sure, but I was so happy. I can't thank you enough for sending me some. It was <laughs> like the best day of my life opening that box and seeing these cans of RC Cola and with this beautiful like retro logo. I don't know how I old know. these are. I kind of don't want to know. Yeah, they they are not old, but they are they have the retro thing and I thought that was really it makes it taste better. They taste great. I RC Cola is delicious. I'm going to go ahead and say we are not being paid or asked to endorse <laughs> RC Cola unlike Nancy Sinatra who very much was. But I did grow up with it. We, I had RC Cola in my house every once in a while. Yeah. If there wasn't Coke or Pepsi or whatever. And always enjoyed it. And I will tell you right now, these cans have just improved my life. <laughs> I love them. They're so good. Yeah, the, the special was financed by RC Cola. They gave Nancy yes. Sinatra a $400,000 budget. She really wanted to do something that was not a typical... Um, staged in a studio, like, you know, Elvis did with the 68 special. Um, right. She was like, I want to be on location. I want to, I want to be, I want different people in it. I mean, although it is an extremely uh, nepotistic, is that nepotistic? Yes. yes. It's a Absolutely. very, it's a very family driven project. And like getting together with family, sometimes certain family members take away from you and others give. So it's a pretty interesting document of where she was in 1967. But why did you yeah. pick out of, you know, all the things we could talk about? Oh. What, what was it that brought you to this? I'm so excited to talk about moving with Nancy. I've loved moving with Nancy for years. And I 
think that part of the nepotism um or or, or part part of how great she is does get sort of swept away with the nepotism D- yes. don't you think like people it's are dismissive bummer. of her yeah and I, I think that she's such an interesting, exciting performer in her own right. And I think that she has a really good sense of humor about her relationship to her family that she, you know, is very playful about in this yeah. in this special. But additionally, I think she's really sexy. I think she oh is that 1967, like, you know, I find... I, I find this era fascinating pop culturally because it straddles counterculture and sort of square mainstream, uh, y- you know, um, we'll say kitsch or shtick or, you know, things that are like maybe schmaltzy. And and this is kind of a perfect example of like having a foot in both worlds. Like you have Lee Hazelwood producing the, the whole Incredible. soundtrack, right? Yeah. He's overseeing everything whether it's a song from oliver or like a standard um or like a cover of like a ray charles song that she does with sammy or his own songs and then you also have you know frank doing his thing like in full (laughs) frank mode the only thing i could compare it to and i'd say the only thing that competes with it is Raquel Welch's 1970 special, Raquel, with an exclamation point, which I absolutely adore, which is such a mashup of counterculture and mainstream culture with her and Bob Hope singing the ballad of uh, Rocky, or the what is it, the ballad of Rocky Raccoon? Raccoon or? Yeah, off the White Album. Yeah, oh my God, just, just madness. But, but 1967, you know, Nancy Sinatra kind of in the crosshairs of like the um, dark eye makeup, like go-go boots, hair that either looks like or is a wig or some sort of like combination of the two. And then you have like the very, to me at least, exciting at the time debate of like, is she or isn't she talented? Oh, such so a bummer. Uh- that combined with like, everything going on which is just so funny and exciting plus as you were saying it wasn't in studios like the first kind of like music video adjacent like series of vignettes um coinciding only really with the monkeys which was on its second season at this point right because it was 67 right yes um and there are shots that are right out of like you know as we go along like there's so much crossover but but boy is it like it's innovative. There's eye candy. The songs are so cool. Um, and I just think it's such an exciting moment. And then the RC Cola of it all is, I mean, it's like out of like an SCTV sketch, how much yeah. sponsorship there is. It it's is so funny. European filmmaking sensibility th- being thrown into it. Like Nancy in all white in a white padded yes. room with the only yes. thing of color is her RC can yeah. and a goblet that they show from really high, that's being poured at a yeah. really high height. So it looks like it's kind of pissing into the goblet. It's yeah. It's splashing. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's really funny. Like they're just, they're really hammering home that this is a classy soda. It's a classy beverage. It's the, it's the classiest beverage you can, even Dean, they don't even show Dean Martin like drinking, you know, scotch or anything. No. Probably take away from the RC of it all. And the song is kind of awesome she, you know like it's a mad Great mad, mad 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 cola rc the one with the mm-hmm. mad mad taste and by the sixth time you know it, it, it's funny throughout the the program she does like three or four of them and then they have other people do the commercial as well with the Our same link song. letter shows up you said is it oh i didn't expect to see you and Classic. then it was what was it desi and yep there were like these three other people show up and you think, well, do you know who that band is? Wait, who was that? Because they, they were at the Hollywood Bowl and there were the shots of the three of them on top of each other. And I know the COVID didn't exist and it shouldn't be something that I noticed. But for the Hollywood Bowl, you want to be like, fellas, spread out a little bit. <laughs> they were stacked. Yeah, it is uh, Desi Arnaz's son. OK. Dean Martin's son. Oh, good. And then another friend. As right. a rock band, as a pop band. Mm-hmm. And so you throw them in there. You have Frank Sinatra Jr. show up at one point just to be like, hey, sis, you need a ride. Yes. So you get him in there. Yep. You have 
daddy. Yeah, that's what they call him. Frank Sinatra's billed as daddy, which is so funny and so weird. And he plays like a security guard. He plays like a cop, basically. Yeah, and he's he's just like Panama. I mean, like, oh, dang it, these kids, you know, just yes. like it's really, it's full on. Yeah, there's a sickness to it. There's a sickness to it, which I approve of. There's mannequins that come to life, which is upsetting. Yes. There's like a there there are there's amusement park imagery that's upsetting. It's Agreed. very like I, I I mean, there's definitely a world in which this is considered. Like, if you don't speak English and you're not from here, like, you're just like, that is the darkest art film I've ever seen. Yes, yes. And it was, as you mentioned before, it was written by a Mankiewicz, yes. um, Tom, whose father, Joseph, Joe. wrote yeah. All, All About, About Eve, Eve, right? Yeah. And yeah. Tom wrote, like, some James Bond films and stuff, but I was reading an article about him just kind of being like, I was always in the shadow of my dad, and for well, the longest yeah. time, I... Just didn't even try. Like, I'm not even going to go there. Um, That's got to be tough. That's the darker side of, of nepotism that I'm not usually, like, sympathetic towards. I'm too busy being jealous. But it, there is definitely a, my dad wrote all about Eve. What the hell am I doing with, like, you know, dialogue for Dean Martin saying he's, you know, Nancy's fairy step uncle. Yes. You know, I'm sure that there was a certain amount of existential self hatred, <laughs> but he made a pretty good career for himself. Yes. No matter, you know, who held the door for him. Yeah. And then it's choreographed by um, David Winters, who did, who was on Hullabaloo yes. and the Tammy show and is a complete maniac. Yes. Like, never stops moving. No, never stops moving. I miss, I miss variety shows. Yeah. I miss. I miss things like this that were an hour long. We're going to jam in all this stuff. It's kind of put together well, but it's also confusing. Mm -hmm. And you're just like lying on a couch with your head on the pillow on a Sunday night, just taking it in. I kind of miss just the energy of something like this. So when David Winter comes in and choreographs these things, it's just like snap, pop, boom, bap, boop. And uh, it's just... His work in it is incredible. Yes, and he's also uh, a huge ham, and he steals the spotlight whenever he's on camera. You know, you're like, you yes. know, there's other dancers next to you. Like, He's front and center. Oh, always. <laughs> always. I wanted to talk to you. You mentioned about, like, is Nancy at this time considered talented or not? Is she getting by through her father's name? I love her voice. And I love the choices of songs she picks out. And she's an incredible lip syncer in this thing. She is <laughs> full on, stares down the barrel yeah, of she's, the camera. She's giving a lot. She's giving a lot of face. Yes. And it's just you, the audience, yes. are mine for the next hour. And I have to give her credit for that. I think it's it's just, you know, compared to some of the other things you see, like we talked about 33. Uh, yeah. revolutions per monkey and how even then the monkeys seem a little uncomfortable still like with this format. Yeah. They're um, tired and they don't know yeah. how to make it weird in a way that they're all comfortable with. And they're over I, it. Kind you're, of. You're right. No, she, she's absolutely right down the barrel. Like that opening song. I got to get out of this town. Oh, God. Um, She, she winks into the, like the lyrics yes. don't quite, they, they, they're not linear lyrics because she's saying that she wants to get away from a guy, but then she's also saying, like, I'm going to get me a man. <laughs> so, you know, she's she's committing to everything she's singing, but it really is mostly about, like, looking into the camera and daring you to tell yes. her that she's not a star. Yeah. yeah, to get to the next location. And that's also where they're starting to introduce. Here's, you know, we're going to have, Lee Hazelwood in this, you know, and you drive by him and his clothes yes. fly off and he's in pajamas all of a sudden. That variety you... show opening of like everyone having kind of a funny little vignette. Exactly. Exactly. And I know she wanted to be taken seriously as a great artist, but I do really appreciate the like the winks and the nods. And the other thing I love about her vocal performances is just all the exclamations. She's just like, ha, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just there's these like little moments she puts into these songs that are really mm. only Nancy Sinatra did that. That's so funny. Almost like the verbal equivalent of horse whips. <laughs> yes. Do you know much about um, Jack and uh, Sally Hansen, who did all of her 
outfits. No, but I love everything she's wearing in this. I found this amazing article uh, in um, Sports Illustrated from 1967. So about Jack and Sally, who Nancy Sinatra called him, um, said that the most important men in America are my father, Hugh Hefner, and Jack Hansen. Oh, wow. He, he this This article, the first part talks about his job, and the second part talks about private club they had which is insane in hollywood but it's it says every night and most every night in the technicolor life of a man named jack hansen it rains dream girls ah! they pour down from the heavens of beverly hills with those exquisite faces luscious figures and that long serious hair that color of ravens and oranges or sunlight they're actresses and starlets and dancers and models heiresses and conveniences and jack hansen relishes them all oh yes and then the whole thing is basically about, I don't make clothes for everyone. Well, clearly, yeah. Only a certain type of woman can come in oh. here and do this. It's a really upsetting article. And then at the end, he says, can you imagine a world without beautiful women or tennis? <laughs> it's, like food or wa it's like food and water. But then you move to his nightclub, The Daisy. If one can remove one's eyes from the dance floor, there are other treats. Doing an Irish coffee at the bar will be Peter Falk or a Tony Curtis. Shooting eight ball in another room will be a Richard Conte or an Omar Sharif. And scattered around the table in the main room, the noise room will be Zsa Zsa, the Ryan O'Neills, and 17 different varieties of textured hosed teenagers, each fully capable of saying, well, hi, and making it sound like, where's the acid? <laughs> Where's the acid? That was the that was the, that was rejected by Wendy's. They were like, <laughs> we want to go in a different direction. I just uh, good job, Sports what Illustrated. What an article! And also, sports. What sport is this? I know. Well, you know, the sport of woman. Girls. I guess. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, the sport of sedu seduction. Yeah, but I guess he yeah. he made the pant legs trim so they wouldn't wrinkle around the back of the knees, and he eliminated pockets and put the zipper in the back and did all this stuff. And Nancy Sinatra was all over this. Well, my my favorite of her outfits is the little black and white mod one she wears in that room with all the black and white photos of her dad, and she's got the little hat on. And I I love I love that one. Well, let's get into the show. So it starts with I got to get out of this town. Yep. And she gets out of town, she drives through a tunnel, and then we have a little part where we see her driving towards uh, a a balloon, right? A hot air balloon? We're going right into Up, Up, and Up, Up, and Away by Jimmy Webb. What do you think of her version of that? I love it. I think it might be, I don't know what the definitive version of that song is, but I always picture this dance sequence when I picture this and also Who Will Buy. I, I, those are like... The bookends on this show that always make me I, I, I you can't do moving with an answer without having those two numbers on either side yeah. of it. Yeah. And then you get those great sequences of the, the, the gentlemen who help her into the balloon, like being on trampolines, zipping through yep. the air and doing yep. flips. And and then it's just a, a glorious spectacle of, you know, short sleeved turtlenecked people just looking fit yes and she's the only one who, and you're like no one's going with her <laughs> yeah you know how to operate that thing what are all those people there for they're just there for a send-off yeah and i think in the balloon it's probably like what you did with the silence video it's probably six foot three man in a blonde wig <laughs> yeah up there in that black <laughs> outfit <laughs> there's definitely a lot of strings i noticed at the bottom of the like carriage like i think it was a grounded uh, vessel yes and then the balloon lowers to the ground and you get some comedic deflating noises. And then she sings to us Sugar Town, which I love this version of Sugar Town. And Sugar Town is by, is also, is that Lee Hazelwood? That's Lee Hazelwood, yes. What a brilliant, Lee Hazelwood, I mean, what a talent. The that coolest. guy is out of control, cool, and what a talent. So, um, so much range, too. Like, there's a world in which Sugar Town was written by a kind of more like Archie's bubblegum. And, the, and then I'll come around and do some Velvet Morning. And you're like, whoa! Totally. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. And it, there's such a unique partnership. I mean, yes. um, I believe he was working with Frank Sinatra, right, on his recordings and was kind of, 
he Frank asked, can you help, you know, with my daughter's recordings? And he made her drop her voice like lower when she sang. Oh, really? Yeah. That's smart. There was a uh, what was a quote where she basically he basically said, you, you need to start singing for the truckers now instead of the pop audience and um which is a kind of a funny idea when you think of songs like some velvet morning it's which is really not made it's made for outer space yeah but yeah she she's just at this point in sugar town again she's looking right at you yeah it's you and her yeah she's like come on let's walk through this forest and she does that kind of cool little mm -hmm. well it's, it's like a it's a she's sauntering sauntering perfect thing yeah you. yeah um, the only, the only, like, I'd say the best example of her singing voice I don't think is in this special, which is Bang Bang. I think that's probably my favorite. That and, you know, Boots, obviously, yeah. are like her biggest songs that are not represented in this special. But, but she, but she does, that's interesting that he um, pitched her or made her like, you know, pitch lower. Cause I think that really, really helps what she's selling and what she can do. Yeah. Are you, are you familiar with like, the later work she did where people were writing songs for her like Morrissey and have you heard those hear records? That, but I'd love to hear that. It's uh, pretty cool. It, how is her range there? Is she even lower? It's it's yeah, it's 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 a little more mature sounding, I guess, but it's still yeah. it's really character driven. Like the, the songs that people wrote for her are they're like stories and right, um, like, like a Marianne faithful kind of yes. more than a yeah but it's cool that that um i just seems like in the world of of musicians and they they really respect her and um mm -hmm. just consider her kind of a, a hero because i feel like day to day her name just doesn't come up I uh we need to start hanging out with better people then. Yeah. We're gonna mention her constantly, I think. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's kind of a shame. She's on Twitter. She tweets a lot. She tweets a lot about how mad she is whenever someone says your dad would have supported Trump. She hates that. She says no, he wouldn't have. Yeah. Um. She she hates Trump and she defends, uh, Frank. I I, I think there's definitely something, and we've discussed this on the best show that we're like. Trump probably looked up to Frank, but I don't think Frank would like would have liked Trump because I think Frank would probably think Trump is a loser. Yes. He doesn't like losers. Trump thinks he's that kind of energy. Exactly. And, and he's a classy guy. And when he says something, everybody laughs and, you know. Yeah. Trump. But but Frank wouldn't let him near him his table. I don't think. No, no. I He would turn on his heels and walk away. Absolutely. He'd be like, ah, oh, really? Okay, interesting. And then just off. Yeah. And that's what Nancy spends like most of her time online doing, which is cool. Yeah. I And I appreciated her being really open about just how Trump just made her feel mentally unwell. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's incredible. I also found out that, you know, they were in that in this forest scene with Sugartown, she they were really hoping for a beautiful sunny day. It didn't happen. So it's kind of gloomy and kind of overcast and spooky. Oh. So leading from this into some Velvet Morning, I think it actually works pretty oh, well. Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. That's that's ideal. I, I don't want to see her in a sunny um, space for Sugartown. It reminds me, if I may go back to the Raquel Welch special, of her singing um, California Dreaming while she's walking around in like gloomy Paris, which is so <laughs> funny. The idea that you'd want to be in California yeah. when you're in Paris. So sometimes locations only help, you know, booster like by, you know, contrasting the song, you notice the song more. I haven't seen that special. It, what's Raquel's energy in it? What is what is she? It, it, it's it's unhinged. The, the sexuality is so off the rails. I'm sure you've seen clips of her in, in a in a long line where people are wearing as like astrology inspired um, like barely decent kind of like swimsuit like things and she does these wild dances it, it's it's i'll come back on the show and discuss it I, I i feel like i'm not even doing it justice giving you a, a headline oh, because it's so important that that is a part two and a part three i mean That's the other part, thing yeah <laughs> that i mean that I, I the reason i really love that you picked this though is you are you know you're such a lover of 
musical theater. You just re- went and saw like Back to the Future live, right? The- yes, I did. I saw the Back to the Future musical. You see, it feel like you see everything and you're taking it oh, all in. I love musicals. I love musicals. I, lo- I love theatricality. I, I-, I love um, lyrics that tell stories and that are, you know, from the point of view of a character. I, I love I love it when something is smart, but you have to like, you don't know that right away because all you see is the, you know, the, the flash. Um, but yes, no, I love musicals and rock musicals, especially. I mean, there's not a lot of them, but I, but I love Tommy and Hedvig and, you know. Yeah. I was going to say, what are the top three rock musicals? Because sometimes when they're wrong, they're wrong. They're so wrong. I mean, I would say like Jesus Christ Superstar, Tommy, and um, let's say Hedvig. Yeah, Hedvig's amazing, isn't it? I just was such a skeptic hearing about it. I was like, oh, a glam rock musical. I it was so funny. I had a chance to see it in New York. I was visiting when it was playing in the really tiny theater off off Broadway. I can't remember what the the place was. At the West Beth back in the day. Yes, I had a friend. Oh wow, we could see that. Are How we... lucky were you? I didn't get to see it because I had a choice between that or going Uh-oh. to see um, Spalding Gray and oh, um, oh lord oh who was it? It was um, Eric Bogosian. <laughs> no, no, it was a, a reprisal of a Gore Vidal play, and it was oh, and it god. had Charles Durning and all these people. Oh and, my right, god! Yeah, oh, no, right, no, no, no. right. Oh, oh, oh. But I wish I could get the DeLorean from the Back to the yes. Future musical to be real and take you back to see no one, John Cameron Mitchell at the West Bend. I know, and no one said no this one is a bad in. choice. Uh, they sorry. basically were like, there's a musical that's a glam okay. rock thing, or we could go see this other thing. Oh. And and oh my I, God. We, we picked this other thing. And it oh. it didn't, it was a, a previews is that what you call it previews yeah was it at the public or something was it like on lafayette i can't remember to... what, what oh, it was but God. it charles you Durning. It he's wonderful was, but, who but cares? he so... he couldn't he couldn't remember his lines oh he was older yes and yeah, so there, people there were struggling when... yeah. and um people God. were coming in to save the day and oh, the audience God. was really uncomfortable and then they'd laugh when somebody would do it because it was so obvious oh, like hey God we're just having fun here it it didn't open um it didn't I'm so go. sorry that is something we must correct we'll kill hitler and then we'll do the <laughs> other thing so I we'll know. prioritize we'll prioritize we'll use the time machine wisely i know but I... then we need to fix this mistake this tear in the I know. something i could have been yeah. car washed by hedvig in a tiny yeah. theater and all i got <laughs> it'll was... come back it'll come back it'll come back oh and spalding gray what a treat to see him in a drama wow that was i like... mean he was i i would have liked to have seen one of his you know monologue shows but yeah. Even then, I mean, if I had to choose between that yeah. and like probably any musical, to, yes. just knowing me, so. Well, the Lee Hazelwood, like I, my favorite Lee and well, it might be my favorite Nancy Sinatra song too is "Some Velvet Morning." Yes. Just because I remember where I was when I heard it, like how old I was, who gave it to me, what cassette was on it, what was on yeah. the cassette beside it, it. I just had no context. It's I didn't impactful. Yeah, and I had no idea what it was. Do you? Did you have a similar yeah. experience? I, I think that song. I think that's such a. I I don't I I don't have a specific memory of when I first heard it, but I will say I think it's such a beautiful song for you to have that experience with because I think that it is more powerful with less context on a mixtape because you are able to project your own story onto it in a way that I think it was meant to 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 serve i mean it that it's kind of like one of the great ballads in a way like the yes. ballad of so and so and and that it's a duet it is so interesting that it changes rhythmically like the um the the like um time like meters like keep going yes. back and forth and the the key like it's such a fascinating song it really is almost like from a musical and if you don't know that Nancy Sinatra's on the track and you're just uh, you're just leaning into Lee Hazelwood's voice yes. and these mysterious lyrics about Phaedra and how yeah. she gave me life and and all of a sudden it changes to a waltz and Nancy Sinatra's voice comes in and it's 
very spooky. And then it just back to him. And then the, the masterful part of the song is where at the end it's just back and forth really rapidly changing from 4-4 four, four to 3-4 mm -hmm. four, and back mm -hmm. and forth with their voices so effortlessly. It must have been so fun to write and make a song like that. Yeah, it's like a pinwheel. I mean, yeah. it, it it almost reminds me of like a Lou Reed song in a in a totally. way. Totally. Like that opening yeah. that opening sentence. Like talk about like an attention grabbing lyric. You know, some velvet morning when I'm straight, and you're yeah. like, what? I know. What? <laughs> like, whoa! It really, really, you know, it clobbers you. It's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, it's and again, I think it's why it's been covered a lot by. Like Lydia Lunch and um, mm -hmm. uh, Roland S. Howard from the Birthday Party did a really cool version. Oh, did did they? Oh, that makes perfect sense. Yes, yes, and they 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 um, were really respectful with it. It was like they were Good. huge fans, um, and also I didn't know, but I didn't know that they were so respected as a duo. And and actually, Rolling mm -hmm. Stone named them as number nine in the oh, best wow. duos of all time. Oh my God, that's so cool. I know. I love that. For a change, Rolling Stone, you're like, oh, okay, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Rolling Stone used to mean something different also. I, I, I'm I, curious about that list now. I think that's such a cool, um, they are such a cool pairing be because they have chemistry and it doesn't seem to be, you know, sort of like poisoned by anything personal. I don't know if they did or didn't have anything it kind of doesn't matter because what they do have is so pure Agreed. um it doesn't bleed into what they're making they have a sister brother dynamic they have yep. a like a like a sexual partner dynamic it's like yep. really interesting they're so playful with each yeah, other they're functional but th yes but they also seem to really respect each other absolutely so basically lee hazelwood is lip syncing on a horse which is hard to do i imagine the playback yeah. You yeah, know, like, that's a good point. you know, you know, and so and then it goes into. Um, Is it Jackson? Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. And they did a killer version of that, too. So I didn't realize until I looked it up that that was the same year that June Carter Cash and Johnny Cash had their version of. Ja so there's yes. competing Jacksons on the charts. <laughs> what What's happening in 1967? <laughs> Yeah, and imagine the bait and switch. Like you, you buy one because you see the title, and you end up you can't tell, you know, what's going on. But so that funny. sequence is really fun. There, she gooses him at one point, and they're yeah. just goofing around, and it's just, I don't know. You you get a real sense of, it's got that Sunny and Cher playful yes. vibe too, you know, and um, just the dynamic of, he's like, I'm just this mustached rugged weirdo the the reason why i like them better than sunny and share is, is like they're this they seem the same if not the same age at least the same status whereas like sunny yes. always seemed a little you know like like what are, what are you doing with that young girl kind of quality to their yes uh partnership and i know that they both got every different things out of it and all that it was different time i know all of that stuff and i and i love I, I love Cher also as an underrated, like, contributor to, you know, the, like, um, just, like, the Wrecking Crew world and the, like, that that whole scene. I think she's an underrated songwriter. That's neither here nor there. I just like the Nancy Lee thing because there there does seem to be a little bit more on, like, equal ground. I agree. They, they, they have mutual respect. Yeah. And one of them is not leading the thing. There's not a feeling of... Lee Hazelwood was being, you're lucky that I'm this great songwriter. Or that he's a mentor. Like, he's not her mentor. He's her collaborator. Yeah. That's yeah. such a great word, mentor. And yeah. um, and then Frank Sinatra Jr. shows up. Oh, yeah. yeah that's, that happened. Yeah, that's a bummer. <laughs> no, one's ever, no one's ever happy to see Frank Sinatra Jr. Except for Frank Sinatra after he was kidnapped. I think he was happy to see him. Do you know that I was reading about Frank Sinatra Jr. because I was like, I think the only thing I know about him is this kidnapping thing. Yeah, the kidnapping thing's all I know, and that Don Rickles joke about it. But I, I, <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm never happy to see him. That's all I gotta say. Well, did you Frank Sinatra with the um, kidnappers? They had a an, an a an amount they wanted. 
he offered more. And the oh. kid kidnapper said, no, we're, just the original amount's good. Like, they oh, didn't okay. go up. They, they, so they were, were like... like they're like Cohn Brothers villains. They're yeah, just, okay, amazing. They're like, let's just stick to what we agreed to. Oh my like, god, that's hilarious. <laughs> but as as weird as the dynamic is, and we'll get into it in a bit when Frank sh- shows up. I yes. guess you know, I don't know what the what your vibe is in terms of him on the prick meter. You know, oh, like hundred, hundred. If they're a higher than a hundred percent, I mean, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah he's a bully. The, he was good with his kids, is what they say. I don't know the truth sure, of it. That but... makes sense. Loyalty, familia, all that. That makes yeah. sense. You know, yeah. he was uh, he was certainly loyal. That we knew that. Yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned um, the mannequins. It's oh. c- coming up in a scene called "This Town," which is really. It reminds me of like a Derek Derek Jarman sixteen millimeter film. It's really. Oh, that's interesting. Kind of. Like poorly lit, underlit, sixteen millimeter film. Yeah, it was underlit, mm-hmm. and everything is just a little unsettling. It's, it's a horror movie. I just expected like throbbing gristle to kind ah! of start coming out, and you know, just being like, "All right, that'll be the that'll be the mashup throbbing with Nancy." <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I I would pay to see that. Oh. Okay. If, I would pay a handsome sum. Well, I know. I'm sure that uh, Genesis Piorge was a Nancy Sinatra fan. I guarantee There's no it. question. Yeah. I abs- there's, I've never been more certain of yes. anything in my life. Yes. We will ride that bet to Vegas. And Absolutely. Throw down. But that, th- those those mannequins are horrifying. Yeah. They're not like n- normal mannequins either. No, they're upsetting. And they don't come to life until Cary, uh, not Cary Grant, until Dino shows up. Yeah. But they are upsetting. And they remind me of the Twilight Zone episode with the mannequins. I don't know if you know that one. And then there's also something else it reminded me of. Oh, have you ever seen or heard of Evening Primrose? No. What's that? Um, It is a television movie. Starring Anthony Perkins and written by our friend Stephen Sondheim. Oh, wow. About And it's about a, a fellow, a poet, who gets locked into a department store overnight. And he, uh, the mannequins come alive. And he has some adventures and falls in love. And one wants to be outside because she's really a person who got trapped and everything. And there's some beautiful songs in it. Okay. Um, at least two that I can think of off the top of my head, but it, it did remind me of that a, a little. Cause anytime mannequins are coming to life, there's going to be some spooky stuff. Yeah. What, when was that made? Do you know what era? 64. Okay. I, wanna, I, I, I could be completely wrong. It is black and white for what it's worth. And it okay. was on television. Um, t- uh, t- Tony, Tony Perkins is a, a, adorable in it. I forget who the gal is, but, um, but yeah, like I said, there's two songs in it that are so beautiful. Take Me to the World and one other that I can't remember. But it's worth watching. You'd like it. Okay. The, with, it's with your Julie's Click to Pick. Mm-hmm. I'm putting it on the, the video store Please shelf. Please do. Please um, do. You, you mentioned the, the mannequins and the, the locales in this are really strange, too. For something that is so on the move and we're going to different places, this looks like a community college corporate vibe yeah. building like an empty concrete yeah. like uh, brutalist it's it's not pleasant to yeah, see yeah that's interesting you said that cuz i forgot for a second and this the special doesn't usually let you forget that it's not in california but for a minute i was like that's not at lincoln center at night is it cuz it does have that sort of 60s like there is a fountain yes um but yes brutalist architecture absolutely it almost looked like a pre-renovation, like that Walt Disney fo- like hall downtown a little. Yes. But they love their deserted um, <laughs> locations. I wonder how many permits Jack Haley Jr. was searching. I know. For. He's like, what can we get? When is the amusement park closed? What can we do? You know, yes, it, it exactly. definitely, it definitely, though, it's so funny you mentioned this and the amusement park because I those I found those really unsettling too, and I I was like, this yes. is a, this is a me problem. <laughs> this is no no no. Okay okay. No, they're they're hor- Those are horror 
location. I mean, I'm surprised she didn't actually end up at the circus at some point. Right. Like, underneath a tent on a trampoline with a clown and a gymnast or whatever else it is. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, oh, and then there's somebody dressed like a lion in a cage. And Yeah, yeah. That could have been. We, we were very. I'm sure that was on the cutting room floor. Well, do you know that she had two other specials? Yes. The sequel. And wasn't there one with the Muppets? Yeah, there was a there was a third one that that never aired with the Muppets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so moving with Nancy on stage was 1971 and featured the Osmonds, and then 73's moving Ooh. with Nancy, nice and easy. Uh, oh, that's fun. I like that. Yeah, was unfinished, um, but there's like photos online of her with the Muppets and stuff. So, and what year was that second one? 71 was the second one, moving with Nancy on stage. The third one was 73. Nice and easy. So that and then, and I wonder it was a Jack Haley Jr. on all three. I wonder because if that was the seventy three one, he was probably already with Liza. And right. to, if we were robbed of a duet with like of a of a trio of Nancy Sinatra, Liza Minnelli, and Miss Piggy singing something, I'm furious. I'm fit to be tied. It is kind of amazing. I, I was on a deep dive trying to get listening to interviews with her, trying to find out more information about this. And all she mostly talked about how great Jim Henson was, but she didn't really talk about what the songs were or sure. who directed it. But I think you're absolutely right. Time and Place 73. Yeah. That's oh right in the crosshairs. God. Yeah. And then probably be like, and my good friend Glenn Fry is here. <laughs> <laughs> Come out and be like, all right, that take be, it easy. Oh, that would oh, be so such a bummer. Oh, right. Because it was nice and easy. I just think yeah. of Claire all nice and easy. And I wonder if there was any like. <laughs> well, then was... they washed the eagle's hair. Oh, they gross! Just, like... <laughs> With a ho- you need a hose and some comet. Just throw it at them and then like run away while the hose starts turning on. Well, this is the part where the Frank family and extended family members start coming in. Um, what do you think of the Dean Martin sequence? The 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 just bumming around. It made me laugh a lot because um, of his cane work. Like he clearly got very very into the idea that he gets a prop, and so he kept like using it. Yeah. On stuff like, and the prop does different things. Like not only does it turn the mannequins to life, but it also like activates water. Yes. And gives her a dress and. It, it was one of these things where, you know, you give like a, you know, a, a dog a new toy and they want to like, they want to take it into the car, you know, they want to take it into the oh bathtub and you have to be like, it's not, you know, it's not tiger time. And you take the tiger and you hide it. Right. Dean, put it down. Yeah. There's that really amazing question that she says to him. Uh, Is that a real magic wand? And he's like, well, it sure ain't Twiggy. Right. That's fun. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. The Twiggy, and then you're like, yeah. The you're Twiggy like, hatred was already in full force in 67. Yeah. Like, yeah. I always and wonder if Dean even knew what he was saying. He had you know? no idea. He was, yeah. he was reading. He actually, they wrote it out phonetically for him on the side of a bottle of gin. And I don't ever know <laughs> how much of his like alcoholism was like a bit or not. I, I think it yeah. was just one of those like, don't bother breaking it down because it's just not worth it worth it yeah um yeah he had that joke and then there was um and it was a twofer right because then they sing that song called things yes which is crazy that song's so silly i had that that was a total shower song after watching it so like, <laughs> things like a walk in the park things and i was like i yeah. don't really think i like this song no but... no one likes it but it, it really it really puts you in a it's fun to make up your own words the way you would if you're making up a song about your cat, for example. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's songs for Jimmy Jazz. It's... Um, there, uh, you also expect him to sing about his wand in the song about things like things like my magical wand, <laughs> things well... of which I'm really fond, <laughs> you know, all he does is show up and make mannequins come to life and look even That's a weird. lot. Yeah. Chris, that's a lot. You said all he does. That's a lot. Well, did you see who he, he got the people to change into? It Themselves. was they were not they were not one to one. Right, but they were trapped inside of Oh, that's true. Yeah, they weren't exactly the right uh they they weren't identical to the mannequins. You're right. They were close enough. Yeah, you know, it's like those days where you 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 
you don't feel very good and and then you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, I'm doing better than I thought. Like my head is right. worse. Right. So, and that was his doing. That was Dean yeah. Martin going things. Exactly. Just dinging the people along. But it is. I just I always wonder what the conversations were like. Does, is Frank the one being like, Dean, I need yeah. you down here. You're going to do a couple songs with my daughter. That's exactly it. You just said it. That's the whole conversation. That's it. OK. That's and, the, and then he hung and up. Like, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, Dean had to find out the details from someone else, from his girl. He had to have his secretary make some calls. Yeah, well, I was always spooked by the myth of Frank Sinatra because Ann Magnuson had that bong water song, Frank, where he's just, she plays him and she's just screaming at people. Yeah. You, know, you lousy bum and this and that. And that was kind of my introduction to who Frank Sinatra That's was. That's awesome that your introduction was like a woman showing you how scary a bully can be when it has a female voice because then it's like more menacing somehow. Yeah, I have some of the lyrics here. He says, get out of my bed. Why don't you go slash your wrist, you bum? I'm a star. Kiss my feet. Get out of sight. Fuck the subpoena. Where's the sheet music? You didn't spell my name right, you disgusting little creep. Fuck Paul Newman. That that was Fuck Paul Newman's funny. That's a funny thing for him to say. Yeah, he yeah. was a total bully. I was never a fan. He does have that song about the planets, which is super funny. And he gave us Nancy, so we can't be completely mad. But yeah, he absolutely has a Dino, come down, do the thing with the with my kid. And Dino said, Okie dokie. And I'll tell you what, if I had to cut one song, it sure wouldn't be things. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. And before we get to Daddy, we get a little Sammy Davis Jr. My favorite. I love him. I would die for him. I, I, I love Sammy so every time I see Sammy, I'm just uh, I'm like my mood is elevated and lifted. I, I, I find him. I, I feel like he's on another plane. He kind of lifts the energy back up that I feel like in those couple sequences with the mannequins, things are kind of getting a little. Yes. Um, heavy. It's getting a little drab. Yeah. Getting a little drab. And then he's just amazing. And they, they have sequences where they just focus on him just dancing alone. Oh, it's it's heaven. And I'm like, can't this be 10 times longer? I just yeah. want to watch him be psychedelic and dance away with a camera around his neck. It's it's it, oh, he's he's so heavenly. Have you you've seen a uh, sweet charity? The, I assume you've seen the Bob Fosse film. Yes. He's so wonderful okay. in that. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Is he wonderful in that? Yeah, but it's funny. I don't know, like, what else would you recommend besides, you know, seeing? There's not life... enough. It, okay. It's just not okay. enough. It's uh, but but his like I think there was an American Masters on him, uh, like a not not the not the greatest doc that he was like deserved, but enough to learn enough about him to be like, God, I wish there was more. I wish I'd seen him on Broadway. You know, so many right. things. Well, one of the other joys besides silence this year is hearing you and Tom on your amazing podcast, Double Threat, talk about oh, thank you. Sammy Davis Jr. and his... Oh, his interest in Satanism, yeah! Yeah, not dipping a toe, not dipping Wasn't a toe. is that fascinating? I had no idea. Did you know Me that? Me neither! I had no idea, but, we, but I never thought Sammy could be cooler, and yet here he is talking about the Dark Lord. Yeah, he was full on. I mean, I think uh, you you guys were talking about Eddie Murphy was having dinner yes. with Sammy Davis Jr., and he was like, he says something like, "Oh, you know, the uh, the devil has just as much, you know, good power as God." Yeah, he's not wrong. No, look at history. No, exactly. Yeah, but it is a weird thing to say over dinner. Yeah, well, you know, I love him. I do too. Oh, I love oh my God. Sammy was the best of the best. Yeah. Okay, so let's get to Daddy now. Yes, let's get this to Daddy. Bums me out personally. Ah, <laughs> I think it's funny as hell, but I get why it bums you out. It'd be weird. Honestly, it'd be weird if it did it. It would be yeah. weird if it did it. Nancy sings to pictures of her dad, black and white photos on the wall. Yes. And then there's a uh, there's like a little mini documentary about Frank growing up. And then which is, which is also that's weird. Yeah. And, right. That's weird. And then they have this sequence where like in the 40s, women are like kissing Frank Sinatra photos and magazines. Yes. Have you ever kissed a magazine? Yes. I have too. as a little girl. Yes. As a little girl. I had oh, dy I sure dynamite. I, I kissed pictures of. Mixed, I had a picture of, of Mickey Dolan's in like 16 when they had their comeback. Then they had their comeback for Pool It. I definitely kicked, kissed pictures of, of Mickey. But I think it's weird if they're dealing with him as daddy. Like, why are they showing pictures of him as a baby? Nobody wants to be like, this is my daddy when he was a baby. Yeah. And then he he basically 
has a, a recording session that Lee Hazelwood's overseen. And it's fine. What does he sing? Like, Fly Me to the Moon or something? Like, one of his standards? He sings, oh, uh, what is it? He, like, fo- he like phones something in. Like, he phones yes. in one of his Younger than favorites. springtime. Oh, sure. Yeah. And it's fine. R&H. But the, the, it's fine. The, the footage of her walking in and they're staged like back and forth of him like trying to make her laugh by wiggling his tie and her doubling over. Yeah, that's never happened. It it kind of made me a little sad. Yeah, I'm like It and, makes me sad too. And I've never looked at a family member as lovingly as she does at her dad during the sequence too. She really <sighs> is full on like, "Dad, you're the greatest." That could But that could be her taking direction from Jack Haley Jr. Yeah, totally. That's what I mean. I just feel like there. This is still some fantasy. Maybe, maybe Jack Haley Jr. and Tom, yes. is it Tom Mankiewicz were there. They're like, pretend that he's Jack Haley yes. or Joe Mankiewicz, and overly laugh at his jokes. Um, and she was like, yeah. "Got it." And then we cut to her in the oil field doing Friday's Child. Friday's Child's good, and she's got her short wig oh, on. Amazing. I long for I long for a time in which women had absolutely no reservations about confusing you with their hairstyles and saying like, "My hair's short now. What are you gonna do about <laughs> it? Are you gonna ask me if I if because if you ask me if I got it cut, you know that makes you like the most basic bitch ever. Yeah, right? just deal with it. I I love the like intimidating kind of attitude around that. Yeah, it's a really amazing lip sync. In another really desolate location, an oil field and like a kind of abandoned shed. Yeah. And she's got this amazing mascara work that's black and white eyeliner. And she's got these sad eyes. Yeah, they're doing a bottom. Uh, they they did. Okay, so I think they did was, I think they did a bottom lash in addition okay. to a bottom pencil. Because her, her lower lashes are yes. remarkable. Like they're geometrically perfect, but they also don't move like they're glued on. So I'm not exactly sure how they did it, but boy, it's impressive. And then that brings us to the haunting amusement park ode, See the Little yes. Children. Um, yeah, I'm not crazy about this me one. Me either. T- tell me why. Too many, chi- too, many, too many children, not enough Nancy. I-, I-, I didn't like the idea of almost like, not desexualizing her, but like, I, I- it- it's the... Um, it's like the sound of music effect of like, well, we'll put Julie Andrews next to a bunch of little kids and that way it'll be okay that you want to fuck her because she could be a good mom maybe. Right. And I don't need to see children around my Nancy Sinatra ride solo, whether it's in the hot air balloon or it's on the roller coaster or yes. it's in an oil field. Yes. Like she, to me, it was like single gal, like on the go. So to True. bring little kids into it who I haven't even met before. Right. I have zero interest in also not bragging, but just like, I just like, don't like looking at little kids. <laughs> yeah. It's like, get the fuck out of here. You're in the way. Oh. And it's true. She is with like everyone she's with. It's like her and Dean, her and Sammy, her and Lee. It's until yeah. you see the Frank stage sequence. It's, it's for something where she's on the move. It is very isolatory. And, yes. um, so when she's here with these things, it feels very tacked on. Yes. And this her and Mrs. Abelman's geometry class. <laughs> yes. No one wants to see that. But then Art Linkletter comes in for a bit, tells you about oh, RC does. Cola and, you know, what a talent she is. And yes. they pour more RC in. And it ends with a really awesome. The best. The, I mean, this is the finale. So have you seen Oliver? Do you know the film Oliver? Well, we were talking about who will buy, right? Oh, right. Okay, okay. Who will buy this wonderful morning? That's from the musical Oliver. Okay. So, Oliver was, I think, 1964. Went West End to Broadway. Usually things go Broadway to West End. Went West End to Broadway. It was a smash in both uh, places. Smash hit. Like, like insanely successful. Mm-hmm. And the songs sort of spun off into singles to some extent. Where is love being one of them? Okay. Um, it is. I I I just rewatched Oliver last week, so it's fresh in my mind. And they they bring that song to like it's like a good fourteen minutes in that movie too. So like they're they're milking it as well. Okay. But in this, 
the idea that they would have it on this like weird semi deserted amusement park. Yes. You know, um, with the choreographer stealing focus and Nancy alone <laughs> on the roller coaster. Yes. I'm um, very sad. It was just, I, I just, I loved it. I loved yes. it. It was just a, it was just a heavenly dance number. It, Think about like Davy Jones singing "Consider Yourself" on the Ed Sullivan Show the night that the Beatles appeared, right? Like, yeah, that's amazing. Right. So Oliver, I can't emphasize enough like how pervasive that show was okay. into our pop culture, not just like musicals, not just theater, not just like you know highbrow or whatever. Like those songs were all of a sudden we woke up and it was in our DNA. It had been imported from Britain, but that was also I think, in a way, it was part of the British invasion to some extent. Sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I never knew that. You also think about, like, Mary Mary Poppins at this time, like, Victorian England. Like, look at some of the fashion of this time. There was, like, all those gals and, like, those cute little newsboy hats. Um, there was just something in the, the zeitgeist for it. So, yes. anyway, taking that musical number and just blowing it out and having, like, a pretty girl do the lead instead of, like, a pretty little boy was so, I don't know. It was so satisfying. And I, I love this number. And I love that they end with it. I didn't I didn't really know the context in it. That shows really like if you look at the songs on it or if you listen ever, if you're bored to like the original cast recording, it really is like banger after banger. And then there's like one or two like reprises. But then you're out. And um, it's uh, yeah, it's just it's just fascinating how it like fits in to me, at least. (laughs) No, no. I mean, uh, it, it does seem like they're doing a lot of, you know, songs from musicals and then, you know, original Lee Hazelwood compositions. And, yeah. Um, it, it is, again, like you said, 1967, like anything is possible. Absolutely. And so we're going to just do all this stuff. And she and she kind of comes home at the end just by saying bye. And it's it's great because she's they, they've overdubbed her saying goodbye. You know, like, oh, I hope you enjoyed our trip. Thanks for coming along. See you again. Bye. And then it's just like. She away. literally says bye, which I think yeah. everyone yeah. should start ending more sh- like sitcoms, dramas, <laughs> right to camera. Yeah. Just bye. She's, and so, then... she's so sexy. I, I can't oh imagine God. not having an enormous crush on her when this, you know, when you first see this. It must have been very exciting to people. Well, I just have a couple questions to uh, ask you. Please. In your wildest dreams, what other guests would you have liked to have seen on this special? Oh, gosh. What a great question. I mean, so it was 1967. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would have loved to see the monkeys, at least um, at least her and Davey, I think, would have been really fun. Yeah. Um, I think um, Petula Clark. Oh, cool. Yeah. Would have been really fun. Um, and then how about as far as like, and I'll say Flip Wilson. 67 is, yeah, kind of a wild yeah. time to choose stuff because, yeah, it's it's just, there's too much. Yeah, I would say, um, who else might be, maybe like, maybe Paul McCartney yeah. also? Yeah, yeah. Or Ring or Ringo Starr, maybe like she and oh Ringo could do like a sketch so together. Good. Oh, <laughs> just imagine Ringo singing things with her instead of Dean Martin. I, you got that. That's what I want to see. If anyone have is any if anyone has access to like deep fake or AI yeah. technology, if you can make that Ringo thing happen, I'll be so happy. Yes. Oh my God. If you had your own special. Hmm. Who would you want your sponsor to be? Oh, um, I would say probably something like really disgusting, like Hellman's or like, <laughs> <laughs> and like just I'd be like Hellman's, the most slippery a sandwich can get, or something. And they'd be like, that's not the slogan. Yeah, and you're just like in a white room, just smearing yeah, mayonnaise like, on a white wall, like, just. <laughs> Like how is it keeps going everywhere? It slides down the wall. Yeah, it slides. Uh. <laughs> it slides down your throat like it slides down the wall. Like Julie, no, no, I'll, I have a better answer, Brock's, because I don't think Brock's candy gets enough publicity. I think they're constantly drowned out year after year. They have a superior candy corn product than 
Jelly Belly or whomever else. All right. I think Brock's caramels are worth people's time. And I think that they need more. They deserve more publicity. I Well, let's fight. Let's do it. Let's get it out there. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, and I at the end of every episode, I always ask the same question, but I, I, I tailor it to the film that you've picked. So on a scale from one to ten, with one being the lowest and ten being the highest... How many goblets filled with RC Cola do you give this special on a scale from <laughs> one goblet filled with RC to 10 goblets? Ooh, I'm going to say nine just because I wish there was more Sammy and less Frank Sinatra Jr. Yes. <laughs> Even though Frank Sinatra Jr. is in it for seven seconds. It's too long. <laughs> it's too long. He should have just like. He and those kids should have just gotten on a school bus and <laughs> yeah. drove off into the distance. And Frank's like, I'll just buy him out. Me. Just pay him off. Buy him out. Pay him off. Um, but uh, but but not nine. Nine's pretty good. And I do love all of the um, I liked what we what we we skipped over, like some of the specifics of those RC spots because there's so damn many of them. But there's one where she's like in a different pair of silk pajamas after like appearing from every other pillar, um, which is very fun. It's a fun little game of peekaboo. It's one of the best product placement advertisement things I've ever seen. It Every one of them has a different location, a different vibe, yeah. and the song's really catchy, and she's she's selling it. She, she, no question. She really does what like Pepsi tried to do, I think, in the 80s when they hired Madonna and Michael Jackson, right. and they just tried to make like cola young, and you're like, what are you doing? I think RC <laughs> succeeded with it. flying colors. Yeah, they paid for her to get us to talk about this. I think it's pretty. I mean, I wish more soda companies were paying for hour long specials today. I do know. too. Have you ever tried um, a Coke cake? like a coca-cola or any i guess it could be an rc cola cake no what's that here's my challenge to you so i i am not from the south i'm from the east coast but i had a friend of mine who is from the south make me for my birthday one year it's a cake made with uh coca-cola in it and it has a chocolate frosting i think it's like it, it was so good because i think the flavors of the cola mix so well with like the notes of chocolate in the same way that like you know bourbon has kind okay. of a that chocolatey like it goes so well so i would say if you have any cans of rc lying around that you don't want like to drink this straight one? or mix with something if you want to use that one and make a coke cake you can find the recipe online like i said it's like a southern treat Please report back, but I have a feeling it's going to be delicious if it was anything like the birthday cake I had one year. The week of this episode coming out, I mm -hmm. am going to make that cake and I'm going to Amazing. put it all over TikTok Please and social do. media and I'm going to grade Good. it. And the next time we meet, and I hope we do meet again. Yes, of course. We have to talk about Raquel. Yes. And I also want to talk to you at some point about fake uh uh, musicals that don't exist, um, like zoo animals on wheels and stuff. Oh, anytime. Keep in mind what will be the next interesting food item that I should cook if it's like, you know, 7 up lasagna, whatever, we'll figure it out. Oh, God, so I'm going to throw up. I did see a recipe for Sprite pie. And I, and I thought to myself, this is the least Jewish thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but a Coca Cola cake, I promise okay. you. Give it a shot and, and, and report back, please. Thank you so much, Julia. It was great seeing you. Thanks. So Thank much. you, Chris. It was, my, it was my pleasure to be here. Thank you for listening to Revolutions Per Movie. We release new episodes every Thursday, so be sure to search for the show on your favorite podcast app and subscribe to the show. And if you've enjoyed this, it would mean a lot to me if you would rate and review it as well. You can follow us on social media at Revolutions Per Movie and also find out more information about our various guests in the episode show notes. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week. Bye.